Before we get too deep into the specifics of how the page tables work, we need to also see the interactions with the control registers. The Intel control registers, there's five in particular that are going to be specifically relevant to paging and some other tangential features that are interesting to us. Also, as an aside, it's been approximately a decade that I've had my intermediate x86 32-bit version of this class out there on Open Security Training 1, and apparently no one has yet taken me up on the idea of naming their band someone and the control registers. So this is still available. This is still out there. I'm not going to start a band, but if you're the kind of person who would start a band, I recommend someone and the control registers. If you don't do it, I'm pretty sure the robots are going to do it when they take over. All right, so we've already seen control register 4 briefly in the context of, well, there's a bit to disable RDTSC style reading of the timestamp counter. There was the UMIP, which was user mode instruction prevention to stop some of those information leaky sort of assembly instructions like SGDT, SLDT. There was FSGS base to have the enablement of new assembly instructions to read and write FS base and GS base. But now let's see all of the different bits that are relevant for paging and that we're going to cover here in this class. Okay, that's a lot more stuff. And as a side, since we've got it here and I've got you, let's go ahead and see a quick preview of the ones that will show up in future classes. Architecture 3001 for virtualization stuff, VM extensions enable. Architecture 4001, well, this, this uh, protected mode enable, which we're going to cover here in a second, that's also relevant to the BIOSE classes because the BIOS type places also are responsible for moving from real mode into protected mode. We're also going to see these things in future exploits class. I don't know which ones, SMEP, SMAP, and CET, although we'll briefly touch on SMEP and SMAP here in a little bit. And then again, I don't know which class it'll be in, but some future trusted computing class will cover the safer mode extensions. That was the Intel TXT technology to basically the precursor of SGX as a way to provide a sort of isolated execution environment. Okay, CR0, bit zero. Protection enabled. This is how the system gets from real mode to protected mode. WP, write protect. This stops ring zero from writing to read-only pages. So if this is not set, then ring zero could just scribble anywhere it wants. But if this is set, then it means the operating system is trying to restrict itself. And sometimes this is used for a technology called copy on write that has to do with operating systems trying to optimize uh, how much memory they use by just changing out contents of memory on demand when, when memory is shared between different processes. PG is paging enabled, and that cannot be set until protection is enabled. So we said at the very beginning, when we we're talking about processor modes, real mode was the earliest mode. It had no support for paging and virtual memory. It had no support for protection rings. So first you got to move into protected mode before you can enable paging. Okay, CR4, PSE, page size extensions. This is going to allow the system to use pages that are greater than four kilobytes. You can think of four kilobytes like it's the default page size. And if PSE is set, then the page tables can start using things bigger than four KB. PAE, physical address extensions, allows the hardware to access physical addresses greater than 32 bits. This was originally appearing before there was full 64 bit support. And we'll cover that a little bit later. PGE, this is page global enable, and it's just a thing to, there's a feature that we'll see later on when we get into tables called global pages, and this enablement of that feature will allow for more efficient caching of translations of virtual to physical addresses. And LA57, last is what it, I read it as, but 57-bit linear addresses, so linear address 57. This is a very new feature that Intel has just uh, expanded the size of the, the effective usable size of the virtual memory space. Even though we say that it's 64 bits, as we'll see later on, it's not really 64 bits on today's hardware. It's usually 48 bits, and this last LA linear address 57 will newly give us 57-bit linear address space on new hardware. All right, now having seen CR0 and CR4 bits, we actually now kind of know it all. 
in terms of how we get from real mode to long mode. You start in real mode and CR0 protected enable is going to get you into protected mode. The EFER, the, the IA32 EFER, the model specific register, long mode enable one, we saw that before, but now we just saw the extra requirements which are CR4 physical address extensions one and CR0 paging one, and that'll get us into compatibility mode. And then if the code segment that's, you know, if the cached value of the code segment long bit is set to one because it got cached from the GDT, then you will be running in 64-bit mode. Just as a minor aside, I want to point out that, you know, you don't have to be forced up in compatibility mode. You could have it be the case that, you know, long mode enable is not actually uh, set, and then you would basically be transitioning when you turn on paging, whether you have physical address extensions or you don't, you would just be here in protected mode, you'd just be in 32-bit mode paging, sort of pure 32-bit mode. And similarly, you could disable paging and you'd still be in protected mode just without paging. Okay, CR4, or sorry, CR3 control register. This is going to start at the base of the page tables that are going to be locked. So once we get into the details here in the next section, you'll see that this is just a physical address that is going to point at some location for the MMU to walk the page tables. And then CR2 is used when the MMU is trying to walk the page tables, but something goes wrong, there's some sort of error, the table says something's invalid, or there's a permission error, or some other reason that we'll talk about later. Something goes wrong, CR2 holds the linear address that was trying to be translated by the MMU when it encountered the error. And that type of error is called a page fault. So interrupt 14 is thrown, and the interrupt handler for interrupt 14 is going to ultimately consult this to try to figure out what went wrong. So interrupt 14, page fault. We'll talk more about that in its own little section. Okay, so how do we access those control registers if we're an operating system and we want to set or clear some of those bits? We do it with just a move assembly instruction. It's just a different opcode than the normal moves you're used to. It doesn't support the RMX form. It only supports a register 64 into the control register. So this would be move R64, so RAX into CR0, CR1, CR2, whatever. So, and it has a form where you move from the control register back out to a 64-bit general purpose register.